Good morning. Hallelujah. 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 And this is a good morning, isn't it? Because it's the day that the Lord has made. And every day we can look at it like that. Because the Lord is going to show us His goodness in some way or another in that day. And for that we can sing hallelujahs. For He is good. He loves us. He teaches us. He rebukes us. Chastises us because we're sons and daughters. It's His goodness that does these things. You know, the Lord speaks to us in many ways. And a lot of times He will just give us impressions or touches in our spirit of what He wants us to do. He also brings confirmation of what He wants us to do. And the name of this devotional today is God Sometimes Influences Us with a Simple Touch. And I believe this is by A.B. Simpson. Numbers 10.33 I want to read in Numbers chapter 10. I want to start with Verse 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Regal, the Midianite, Moses' father in law. This is what Moses said We are journeying into the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good, for the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go. This is father-in-law. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee. For as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, Yea, it shall be, that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. And they departed from the mount of the Lord, three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey, to search out a resting place for them. Now Moses went out, didn't he? The Lord told him to go, and he did. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass, when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, when the ark rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. You know, Moses, this was a great journey that Moses set out on. But he obeyed the Lord, didn't he? He obeyed the Lord in what he told him to do. Now this is just a very learning, really, devotional today because we need to pay attention to the promptings of the Lord in our spirit and the Lord always will give confirmation in what he's telling us to do you know I think about when the Lord just made a real impression in my spirit to go down to this certain house and he said, I want you to go down there and help. And we didn't know exactly what was going on in that house. But I obeyed the promptings. We obeyed the promptings of the Lord. And I went down there 
and this man was dying. And the Lord prompted me to start helping this man. And he got better. And the Lord gave him eight more weeks of life to get right with him to get his heart cleared before God because he knew he wasn't right and there were many times he told us that that he knew his heart was not right with God and he wanted to be right he wanted to make sure he had true salvation he wanted to make sure his heart was cleared before God now what would have happened if I had not paid attention to the promptings of God I truly believe that man would have died that day in the condition that we saw him when we went down there I truly believe he would have died and he would have died unprepared to meet his God because you know what a lot of times people have religion they have an outward head knowledge of God and salvation, but they don't have it where it counts, and that's in the heart. They think lightly of sin and think they can waltz into heaven with sin on their heart, and there's no sin going to be in heaven. So I'm giving this example because... You know, for eight weeks, God had us by the bedside, especially the last four weeks of this man's life. Every day, practically all day till night, ministering and helping him and caring for him. And we grew to really know him and know his heart. But I can tell you for certainty when he passed from this life to the eternal life, he was right with God. He left this world in peace and in rest because he was right in his heart with God. Now see, I give this example because it's very important that we pay attention to those impressions, those promptings of the Lord. And even the last impression the Lord gave me in my heart about this man. We had been over there every day, but that day we didn't go over there. But toward evening, the Lord gave me such a burning, fiery impression in my spirit to go down there to that man's house right now right now and we did and it wasn't long after that that he died but we were there right in front of him we were there and we witnessed him passing from this life to the next in peace and in rest because his heart was cleared before God I'm going to give you examples such as these as the Lord gives them to me today because I want you to know how important it is and really how important this little message is this devotional to pay attention to the promptings of the Lord in our heart and he will confirm sometimes as we step out he will confirm that what he's speaking to us in our spirit is the truth is the way it is hallelujah God sometimes does influence us with a simple touch or feeling 
but not so we would act on the feeling. If the touch is from him, he will then provide sufficient evidence to confirm it beyond the slightest doubt, as he did with us. Consider the beautiful story of Jeremiah when he felt God leading him to purchase the field at Anathoth. He did not act on his initial feeling, but waited for God to completely fulfill his words to him before taking action. In this case, Jeremiah wanted confirmation that what he was hearing is what God said, and the confirmation to him was what happened here. Then once his cousin came to him, bringing the external evidence of God's direction by making a proposal for the purchase, he responded and said, I knew that this was the word of the Lord. The Lord works in so many different ways. Sometimes he does like this. He will put an impression as he did in Jeremiah. And then he will also put it there to, to wait for a confirmation. And sometimes he will put impressions in us to do something right away as he did us. And has done us many times. And I'm sure you too. And when he does that we have to obey. And not delay. I want to read in Jeremiah. This is interesting that Jeremiah was buying a field. <laughs> and what was interesting about it is at the time that he was buying the field, Jerusalem was being surrounded by the Babylonian army. And the Lord impressed on him to buy a field? When Jerusalem was fixing to be destroyed? Now see, God tells us stuff. We don't understand it a lot of times, what he tells us. But it's important to pay attention to the promptings of the Lord. And if they're, as far as the confirmations go, sometimes he does have us wait for confirmations. But sometimes, as we go, he gives us the confirmation. Like I said, as he has done us many times many times. Jeremiah, I'm going to start in chapter 32, verse 6. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. Okay. Now pay attention to what the word of the Lord said to Jeremiah. He says, okay. I want you to buy this field, Jeremiah. And behold, here is the person that's going to come. He's going to be thine uncle. He's going to come to you saying, buy the field. It's interesting, isn't it? It's just like with Paul. <laughs> When he was blind three days and he told this other man to go and lay hands on him. He told him exactly where he is, whose house he was at. And so the man obeyed. Verse 8. So Hamel, mine uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison according to the word of the Lord. Here it was. Here comes the confirmation. That yeah, God said this to me. And said unto me, Buy my field. Just exactly what the Lord said. He would say, Buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin. For the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. You see that? Isn't that awesome? And Jeremiah said, And I bought the field of Hanamel, my uncle's son, that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even seventeen shekels of silver. And I subscribed the evidence, and sealed it, and took witness 
and weighed him the money in the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. See what the uh, symbolism of the Lord having him by a field right in the midst of Jerusalem being surrounded by the Babylonian army and Jerusalem fixing to be destroyed. See the symbolism of God having him by this field. Here it is. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. In other words, out of the destruction. Out of the destruction will come again life. Jeremiah waited until God confirmed his feeling through a providential act. And then he worked with a clear view of the facts which God could also use to bring conviction to others. See that? God is such a mighty God. He told Jeremiah what he wanted him to do. And he also he laid it out for Jeremiah who was going to come to him, tell him to buy the land, he laid it totally out for him. Right in the midst of destruction. As a sign that, yeah, even though this is going to be destroyed, even though Jerusalem is going to be destroyed, there will be life spring up again. And I believe he's saying that as well. You know, there is destruction coming. To this world. There is destruction coming to America. But I believe the Lord is saying out of that destruction will again spring up life. And you know what? The most important life there is is spiritual. Spiritual life. And I can say that, especially this thing that is so close to our heart right now. For our friend just passed away a week ago today. And I keep coming back to that. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a powerful testimony. That even though the body, yes, sometimes is destroyed by sickness or whatever, that's not actually what God is after. He's after the restoration of the heart. That's what he's after. And John and I watched a mighty work of God the last eight weeks in this man's life, we watched God transform him, his heart. And all the veil was ripped away. All the facades were ripped away. All the wrong mindsets were ripped away. And God dealt with him in the innermost parts of his heart. 
and I'm so glad that he responded because God did a mighty work in him and he's with him today and we shall see him again be obedient to the Lord you know even in this with Jeremiah (laughs) Jeremiah knew the Lord he knew what the Lord said to him was right and true but this was a time when he needed to wait for a confirmation of what God spoke to him and he did wait and it happened exactly like God said it would happen so he waited until God confirmed his feeling through a providential act and then he worked with a clear view of the facts which God could also use to bring conviction to others that was a sign even to others that he was buying property in the midst of destruction in the midst of the armies surrounding Jerusalem fixing to destroy it It was a sign to the people even like Jeremiah what are you doing buying property when Jerusalem is fixing to be destroyed it's like hey because this is a sign from my God saying there will be life spring up out of the destruction again thus saith the Lord and when he speaks it's going to happen we are not to ignore the shepherd's personal voice to us but like Paul and his companions at Troas we are to listen and also examine his providential work in our circumstances in order to glean the full mind of the Lord we are to pay attention to what the Lord shows us to his voice and he speaks in many ways he can speak through other people speak in his word speak in nature so many things Acts 16 6 I want to go there and read some of Acts 16 starting with verse 6 now when they had gone throughout Pergia the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia after they were come to Mysia they essayed to go into Bithynia but the Spirit suffered them not see that the Spirit suffered them not we can get ready to do something and feel like it's the right thing but then the Spirit of God will pull us up short and say no no I don't want you to do that but this is what I want you to do and that's what happened here in this case so in verse 9 and a vision appeared to Paul in the night there stood a man a Macedonia and prayed him saying come over into Macedonia and help us and after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia see that God changed their plans did they wait around trying to figure it all out no verse 10 says and after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them see that see how important this all is such an important little devotional today wherever God's finger points his hand will clear away never say in your heart what you will or will not do but wait until God reveals his way to you as long as that way is hidden it is clear that there is no need of action And that he holds himself accountable for all the results of keeping you exactly where you are. And that's what he does. He will make our way clear. If he's not making the way clear, that means 
He wants you right where you are until he makes a way clear for you to be somewhere else. And this is something we have to keep in mind ourselves. He wants us right where we are until he makes another way clear to us. And right now he's making it pretty clear that he wants us here. For God through ways we have not known will lead his own. And that's, I've just mentioned some of them to you through these circumstances in the word of God and even our own. We need to pay attention to the promptings of the Lord and He will always give confirmation when He tells us something. We will know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. He will bring confirmation in some way to confirm what He's saying to us. Hallelujah. So today let us listen to the voice of God, to the impressions, to the promptings, to those simple touches, and yield to the Holy Spirit and say, yes, Lord, I will do that. I will go there. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this little message. I pray you seal this word, Lord, to the hearts of the people. Let the seed be planted deep. Let it grow up and bear much fruit, Lord. And that the enemy will not steal the seed of this message. And people will remember it. And it will be brought to their memory over and over and over again, Lord. Through whatever circumstances in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day knowing that your times and your ways are in God's hands. Amen. Hallelujah.